Brian, it is so great to see you in person. It's been such a long time since we've been together. It's great to see you as well, Patty. And I cannot believe how this year has flown by. And here we are at FedGIS again. I know this is my favorite time of the year. It's a time we come together to hear about all of the innovation that's happening across the federal government to address the challenges. Yeah, a few years ago, I was blown away by the work our users were doing with story maps. And they continue to find new and innovative ways to communicate, both internally and externally. I know my family has been getting outdoors much more recently, and we've been using the National Park Service's trail story maps to plan our hikes. And the National Park Service is also using story maps to help communicate around critical issues like Yellowstone and protecting its water. Our users continue to do amazing work with story maps. But we've noticed a trend over the last year, which is an explosion in the use of dashboards. Oh my gosh, the Johns Hopkins University dashboard is amazing. And we've seen dashboards be adopted by many organizations. For example, another dashboard that we saw a lot on the news was the US Northcom dashboard and how the commanding general was using that for situational awareness on a daily basis to manage the command. Yeah, and my favorite senior leader quote from the entire last year came from the South Carolina National Guard and the Major General leading their COVID response. And he said, I'm being briefed three times a week, but I've relied on that dashboard almost hourly for more than 300 days. But they're not just for executives. Um, the World Health Organization has been using dashboards to communicate out key performance indicators around COVID globally and specifically to the ministries of health. And they've been tracking COVID, but now we're seeing this shift to actually helping with the dissemination of vaccinations across our nation. And it isn't just COVID either. We're seeing users create dashboards to report on everything from map production statistics to personnel readiness and the availability of critical resources to support operations. And over the summer, we saw this uptick around weather events. So supporting hurricanes, floods, wildfires, and of course, the Census Bureau was using dashboards to ensure that they count everyone once, only once, and in the right place, just to name a few examples. And now the latest trend we're seeing is agencies working together, deploying hubs to create a destination for collaboration. They're bringing data, apps, and organizations together to focus on key initiatives and major issues. Hubs are uniting organizations to tackle challenges like climate change, racial equity, and emergency management. So those aren't just one agency issues. Those require a whole of government approach and sharing and collaborating uh, are key and paramount. We've also seen RGI's hub help federal agencies to uh, coordinate and move forward around a common map and a shared goal. And now we're seeing organizations like FEMA lead on this, both with COVID and emergency management. Hubs are linking organizations to critical data sets that need to be shared across a broad community of users. And there are other examples as well. We're seeing this with the American Red Cross and the US Army Corps of Engineers fielding hubs to support their own initiatives. So there's really been these three big trends. Story maps have increased over the last few years. Dashboards really exploded in use in 2020. And RTS Hub has become this destination for collaboration to really connect everyone. So this is just a few of the trends that we've seen on the Esri National Government team. And we believe that you have been seeing the same thing.